another episode of Search It Up with Sienna, the web series where I use IMDb to discover and talk about all different kinds of movies and TV shows and how the people in front of and behind the camera not only make it all possible, but are somehow all interconnected. On today's episode, I'm going to be talking about the movie Big. And I'm so excited, ladies and gentlemen, because I have an extra special guest joining me today. She's an Academy Award winning actress. Her name is Mercedes Rule, and she plays the mom in Big. Big is a 1988 comedy fantasy directed by the late, great Penny Marshall. The movie Big is about a boy named Josh Baskin who just like a lot of kids, wants to be big. He wants to be an adult. He wants to be treated like an adult. And actually, he gets that wish. When he goes to a carnival with his family, he makes a wish to his old heart speak, saying, I just want to be big. And then the next morning, what do you know? He's big. He's an adult. And he thinks it's great. I mean, he gets to go to the city, live in a huge apartment by himself, has a job. He gets to gets treated like an adult. He has a girlfriend. He has everything. But he starts to realize that, is it so great? Yeah, I mean, he skipped his whole childhood. I mean, you just got to enjoy your childhood while you have it because soon you will be big. You just got to wait and see. That's the meaning of life. And... Then he also realizes that his mom misses him terribly. It's not like one of those movies where time freezes. His mom is actually missing a kid. He, she doesn't know where, his, where her kid is. And he realizes that um, he goes on a journey with, um, with the help of his best friend to be a kid again and get everything back to how it was. I think that this movie is so funny. I mean, it's just... It's basically just a little kid in a train, um, put into, like, a little kid's soul put into, like, a, a big guy's body. I mean, it's really funny. And it's so heartwarming. I mean, you learn so many life lessons in it, and it just warms your heart some scenes, too. It's really entertaining. I mean, I can watch it so many times. It's just such a great movie. You see the experience of, um, not skipping your childhood and how... Enjoy, enjoy every moment that you have of life. The movie stars Tom Hanks as Josh Baskin, Mercedes Rule as Josh's mom, Elizabeth Perkins as Susan, Josh's girlfriend, John Hurt as Paul, David Moscow as young Josh, Jared Rushton as Billy, and Robert Logia as Macmillan, Josh's boss. My favorite part about the movie is the piano, the big piano in F.A.O. Schwartz where um, Josh and his boss like do chopsticks on it. It's kind of funny. They're like, well, da, da, da. it's really funny. And I, one of my favorite lines is when he first comes, um, Josh first comes down as an adult and runs in like as an adult. He's like has a sweatshirt on. He has his dad's clothes on. He's like, what do I do? What do I do? And then his mom's making breakfast, telling him to come down, you know, before school, or he's going to be late. And he runs out the door. And then, or like, he grabs some toast and then runs out the door without his mom seeing him. And then he takes a breath, and he comes back in. And then his mom gets all scared and is like, ah, and holding up a knife and stuff. She doesn't, she doesn't, and she, he's trying to convince her that she, that he's her son, but, uh-oh, like, she, she's scared. She doesn't know who this guy is. And yeah, it's just a really funny part. It's like, it's funny, but really scary. I mean, for the mom situation, um, just to put, just for Mercedes rule to put that, to put that situation in her shoes. Like it's funny for us, but scary for her. And now ladies and gentlemen, I'm so excited for you guys to, um, for you guys to see my interview um, with Mercedes Rule, who is an amazing person and an amazing actress. But before I get to that, I'd like to tell you a little bit about her. Mercedes Rule is an Academy and Tony award-winning actress who has appeared in dozens of films, including The Fisher King, Married to the Mob, The Warriors, Big, Another You, Last Action Hero, 
Lost in Yonkers, and many more. On Broadway, she performed in Lost in Yonkers, The Go or Who is Sylvia, The Rose Tattoo, The Shadow Box, and I'm Not Rappaport. She was also in HBO's The Lost Child, Doubt, North Shore Fish, A Girl Like Me, and Entourage, among others. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I am so honored to talk to this amazing person and amazing actress today, Mercedes Rule, and I hope you guys enjoy. Can you talk a little bit about what inspired you to become an actress? You know, I think I was already on my way to be an actress when I was about four years old. Mm -hmm. uh, my, parents, my dad worked for the FBI and we moved around a lot. And we were living at that time in a little new apartment development in the, the mountains outside of Scranton, Pennsylvania. My dad was working in Scranton. And there was the back, the back of, the, of the apartment building formed a kind of a, a courtyard. And in that courtyard was a beautiful green hill and lots of trees. And I would go out there and I would sing opera. <laughs> I just, I, I, there were windows, you know, all on one side of me, but it never occurred to me that anybody was listening to me. And I thought my mother told me later that all of the ladies would listen behind their curtains in their kitchens to me singing opera. <laughs> and I know that I, the desire to become a per performer was alive and well when I was four. I forget what I saw, sang about. Since I um, was uh, brought up in a very Catholic family, I, I seem to remember my theme was baby Jesus a lot. I sang a lot of songs about baby Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> That's how, and, and then I started to do um, little plays with my friends and we'd, we'd move them around to every, all the family's living rooms and we would set up the living room and we would play out our play that we wrote. And then I started doing theater, not so much in grammar school, but in high school, definitely. Um, I went to an all girls school. So for instance, I played Ernest and the importance of being, you know, um, and then I, I majored in English in college, but I worked a lot in the theater group. And as soon as I got out of college, when I was 21, I slammed into New York and signed up for classes at the, um, Herbert Burgoff studios, very, I, a place where I teach now, but a wonderful acting studio. And that's where it began. And it probably took me about 10 years to learn acting and to become secure enough mm -hmm. as a, to have something you might call technique. Because um, uh, for 10 years, I studied and waited on tables, it seemed, and did a lot of other, you know, silly mm -hmm. jobs to, to stay alive. But yeah. um, in about 10 years, when I was about 30. Mm -hmm everything um, started to open up for me. And the public theater led to an off-Broadway role. Somebody saw me. The off-Broadway role led to a Broadway role. And now all the casting directors were starting to know who I was. And a casting brought me in front of Penny Marshall one day and said, this girl is good. And at first I was reading for the girl in, in, in the movie. I said, oh no, I want you to play the mother. So I was, oh, okay, okay. And, uh, uh, so there I was, and that was not my first um, uh, job in in film. I was in a movie called Warriors before that, and um, I don't know. I did a film called Heartburn uh, with Meryl Streep, small part, but nevertheless with Meryl in a scene with Meryl. I think that may have predated Big too, but mm -hmm. Big was, you know, really important film. How, what was your process like that you went through to land the role of Big? I think you said a little bit about it, but. Yeah, um, it, it, was, it was instinctual. And um, I think Penny saw that w w what I had to bring to the movie was something more maternal mm -hmm. than the. And um, uh, at a certain point, she started seeing me that way. What did I bring? Um, I tried to bring myself, uh, because this role was not far from me, you know, who I am right now, talking to you. <laughs> uh, but I tried to do myself seamlessly, so that it looked like I was really there. I was really having the experiences in the film. Mm -hmm. And I enjoyed it very much. And I enjoyed working with Tom Hanks, particularly, who is such, such a nice man. What was it like to work with Tom Hanks? Was he like funny? Was he, um, you see, he just said that, you just said that he was nice and. 
he was very nice and he was very um, uh, focused on what he was doing because he knew he had to play a 13 year old in a man's eye. But he was smart enough to know that 13 year olds can be very, very bright and very subtle and have a wonderful ideas and creative ideas. Um, it's only when they get into an emotional situation that they uh, that you see that they're they're not emotionally mature, mm -hmm. um, and then you you think oh that that adult is not emotionally <laughs> mature, but, and that's what the girl kind of finally is like, I I love you. Are you gonna return it? And mm -hmm. I I really think you're nice, you know. And, but he did that so well. Yeah. And, watching him, we, we shot a lot of it, some of it in an actual house, but um, a lot of it was on a sound stage where they built a set that looked like the outside of a room, like the time that I was talking to my neighbor at the window. Uh -huh. That I up in a building lit for night, and I was sitting on the side of just one um, wall. It's just a wall pulled up by, you know, braces that was made to look like the outside wall wow. of a talking to somebody else who was uh, uh, in a similar situation. And, and they filmed it that way. The whole thing was filmed inside on a set. Um, but when I watched him, I saw, you could almost see right before he did a scene, you could see his brain working. And he knew exactly what he wanted to do. And he focused it down on that smart young 13 year old and he got that inside of himself and then they said action and he was a 13 year old in a grown man's body <laughs> that, that's a transformation that's real talent you know he's sort of uh, america's uh, a male sweetheart <laughs> he's like uh, jimmy stewart used to be in your grandparents' generation. You had the one mem very memorable scene with Tom Hanks where um, he just decides to go to you and even though he's a grown man and just say, I'm your son and stuff. What was it like filming that scene? Like that was such a cool scene where like you got all scared and like you held up the knife and stuff. Yeah, yeah. I didn't recognize him. I thought he was somebody who had, who had um, you know, broken into my house. <laughs> There's some real fear there. Mm -hmm. It's like, what? No. No, 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 no. Don't you come near me. No, no. I mean, it was like, oh, who is this? Because she didn't recognize her son in him at all. Mm -mm. I mean, they morphed, you know. And so um, that was a lot of fun. <laughs> that was a lot of fun, that scene. But you really, uh, you really had to, I had to focus myself on, uh, not on Wonderful Tom, but on the strangeness of a stranger coming into your house and calling you mom. You know, I mean, that, when you think about it, would be very weird. Yeah. <laughs> so that was a challenge. Do you have any really great memories on set while filming Big? We filmed uh, uh, the scene in the carnival area where the magician's booth was, where he got the card. Uh-huh. We filmed that um, in, in an area in New Jersey uh, uh, right on the river, right on the Hudson River. Oh, wow. Filmed it into the night. I mean, really almost into the morning and because it had to be dark. And I just, I remember how beautiful and how strange it was to be on that set. Um, uh, Penny Marshall was terrific. She certainly knew what she was doing, but she appeared to be all over the place and, and very distracted and always calling for cigarettes. And she, I, I began to think, I don't know, because she, she seems to be very scattered. So when I, and then I saw it, and then I saw, she knew what she was doing every step of the way. I wasn't sure it was gonna be a good movie. And then I saw it and I thought, wow, I have to reassess that woman. <laughs> Pulled, she pulled it out of the hat. She was terrific. She and she edited it in such a brilliant way. Mm -hmm. um, it, it surprised and delighted me. Your character is essential to the plot. 
and to keep the audience grounded in reality. I mean, like, it's not like some of those movies where, like, time freezes when you, like, when you watch a movie and, like, they're just, like, transformed and stuff. But you, like, you were actually, like, you're missing your son. You didn't know where he was. You thought he was kidnapped. And, sure. but he was just a kid who, um, who, like, misses his mom and realizes that he loves his mom a lot. And how do you prepare for such a serious role like that? Well, you know what Shakespeare says? He says um, in, in Hamlet, Hamlet is talking to the troop of actors who have come to entertain at, at his family's castle. And he wants them to be realistic. And he says, um, hold the mirror up to nature, by which he's saying, do exactly what would happen naturally in nature if you were in this situation. Don't overstate it, don't understate it. Um, so I think I really hewed to that, that, that direction from Hamlet to, um, and, and a lot of acting has to do with just sitting down, meditating, contemplating before you even open your mouth. Um, I had to think about the reality of what it might be like if you're child and instead of running into your house. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're, you have to forget that you're doing a comedy, in essence, and you have to just um, focus on that scene and uh, understand the, the, the shock and the heartache of it, you know? Because only that way does the scene live. Mm -hmm. So uh, it, 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 I have to say it took some, it took some real thinking. It mm -hmm. took some, um, you know, sometimes actors use the phrase as if act as if, and I had to act as if. And I thought my own child disappeared and a strange man came in calling me his mother. I mean, when you think about it happening to you, it's <laughs> terrifying and heartbreaking because he was gone for days. Mm. So I, I, a lot of thinking goes into acting. Mm -hmm. um, I've been doing a lot of timeless movies I've been reviewing and I haven't even meant to like I've just like looked I have just like looked at what I'm doing and I'm like oh this next movie is also timeless and yeah. now this one is too big is such a timeless movie um, what about the movie makes it timeless in your eyes well <clears throat> I think it connects with a lot of mythological stories that have trapped through the human experience since the beginning of time. And this is a particular myth about the lost son um, and, and the mother uh, pining for the lost son. Um, you see it in, in many plays, many fairy tales. Uh, uh, you see it in the Bible, you know, it is a, a, a one version of it is the prodigal son. Um, uh, uh, so I think what makes it timeless is that it strikes something very deep and ancient, a chord that's very deep and ancient in the human experience. Um, the mother losing a son and the son off on the hero's adventure, but with a twist. He now looks 30, not 13. Mm. And, and, and that's where the magic comes in. Mm. And the fairy tale element of it comes in. And there is a, I think there is a yearning in, um, there certainly is a, a yearning in older people to be young again, <laughs> but I think the yearning in young people yeah. to be old, the wisdom of being old and the freedom of being old, mm -hmm. uh, older, older. So it, 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 it gathers a lot of myths and fairy tales, uh, Big does, but uh, um, in so doing, and this is where Penny was so smart, it, um, it becomes universal to us all. We all recognize something of ourselves in it. The yearning to be uh, older, the yearning to break free of the mother and go out into the wide, wide world, the loss of the mother for the son. I mean, in ancient cultures, when a boy turned 13, the elders of a tribe would come and take the child from the mother's arms and take him away to the mountains. And for a day and a half, they would put him to all kinds of tests and, 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 uh, uh, they would teach him many things and they would uh, give him tribal secrets because now he was 13 and he is entering adulthood at 13. 
adolescence in, in ancient times was the beginning of adulthood. And when he came back, by gosh, he was treated like a man, even by his mother. Because yeah. part of it was very scary for a little boy. But when he came back and had gone through all these wonderful uh, uh, rituals of the tribe and survived them, he now had a kind of respect from everyone that he didn't have the day from his mother's arms. So there's that in the story, you know? Yeah. Uh, I think it's I think it's timeless because we all relate to it in a very deep way. Mm -hmm. You can't say that about every movie. Yeah, that's that's a great explanation. Thank you so much. And um, what are you currently um, working on? Um, is there anything that you can share with me that you're currently working on? Well, you know, um, right now there's no film being filmed, no television, no video, and certainly. <laughs> Broadway is closed. <laughs> what I am doing, and what I just did this afternoon, I'm working on a play called The Gin Game. It was done years ago on Broadway with um, a really great actor. His name is Harris Ulin. And we live out in East Hampton, uh, in the Hamptons. Uh, I'm, not in, I'm not in New York right now. Uh, and um, there is a theater out here, a fine old theater called the John Drew, and they're building an open air amphitheater out behind the back of it um, so that they can do real plays in real time and they're going to have a spaced out audience you know six feet apart and they can only have 50 people and the tickets sold out in 10 minutes people really love theater they want to go see live so when i found that out i thought boy i better <laughs> i better really start working on this play so we were rehearsing all afternoon until i called you wow yeah, The Gin Game. It was written by Hume Cronin and Jessica Tandy. Your mother or your grandmother might know who they are. They were a very famous couple. They were married, and they often acted together. This was back, I think, in the 70s when the play was originally done. Wow. And what was your favorite project that you worked on? I mean, I was looking, and you're in so many amazing movies and TV shows. Ah, there were so many favorites. I would say... Um, uh, when I was a young woman and I was working in the great re the regional theaters around the country, I worked at the Denver Center Theater, which had just opened up and was sort of um, aimed at being the Lincoln Center of the West. And I did a, a, a Greek play called Medea there. And that was an extraordinary experience. And it was a gateway experience. I moved out of that experience and suddenly I felt I had, I had some real chops, you know, it's what actors say when they've really developed some technique. I, I had some chops after that. But I, I would say probably the film I enjoyed most was The Fisher King, although I'm, I very much enjoyed doing uh, Lost in Yonkers on Broadway, Neil Simon's play. Um, so it's, those are three big lights in yeah. my past. Um, who was the hero in Big in Your Eyes? Who did you think the hero of the movie was? The hero of the movie was the Tom Hanks role. Mm-hmm. Gosh. I agree. Yeah. I agree with that. I agree with that a lot too. I thought the friend Billy, I thought that he was um actually he had a little he helped a little bit because he kind of made Tom Hanks realize how much he missed, like how much he missed um home and stuff. Like first he said like he like he got mad because like Tom Hanks was so into work and stuff. And then yeah. he got mad and he was like, What about our friendship and stuff? And then Tom Hanks went back to see his childhood that he missed. So that was one of the other people I thought that um may have helped him a little bit. I thought he did a wonderful, wonderful job. And um in Harry Potter there's a similar relationship between Harry Potter and his friend. I love Harry Potter. Yeah, right? Oh, what was his name? That wonderful red haired Guy. Ron? Ron. Ron. <laughs> and oh, in Don Quixote, the famous uh, 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 story and, and film from originally by Cervantes, uh, a, a great Spanish writer, um, Don Quixote and Sancho Panza, they both, had, so their relationship was also classic. Their relationship also came out of fairy tales and myths. That mm -hmm. is a, that is a great, that is a typical relationship that goes back through stories in all time. Even in the great epic poems, the Iliad and the Iliad, there are um, duos and threesomes who are sworn to, to each other, to protect each other. But One more quick question for you, and it's really quick. Um, okay. I know that you're from New York, and 
I'm from the New York area as well. Do you have any favorite restaurants that you like to go to? There's a wonderful place down in the village, the West Village, called Morandi. And I used to meet with a bunch of friends there. And in the summertime, we could sit out front in a um, cafe. I haven't been to Morandi in a couple of years. And just the other day, a friend um, texted me um, and said, Morandi is no more. They've closed up. They went out of... Like so many, I think we're going to find when New York finally truly opens up again. Mm -hmm. I have to look at the sadness of having lost some favorite places, mm -hmm. restaurants, shops, things like that. Thank you so much for um, talking with me. It's an honor and a pleasure to talk to you. And I'm so glad um, I learned so much from you. So thank you. You are very self-possessed. Tell me quickly, let me ask you a question. And you are very welcome. What do you want to do when you grow up? Actually, I do some acting now and stuff. I do auditions, but I love to act. That's one of the things that since I was little, um, and then since I was eight, I really took it seriously, and I started doing auditions and stuff. My dream is to become an actress right now, but I do some additional sports. Like, I do tennis is my main sport, but I do, like, dance and singing, too, but I love acting. It's one of my favorite things. Why did I know you were going to say that? <laughs> <laughs> well, best of luck to you, my dear. Thank you and so much. I, I hope the project just flies for you. Thank you. Thank you so much again, Miss Rule. It was an honor and pleasure to talk to you today, and you inspired me so much. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for some fun facts. My first fun fact is, did you know that the piano scene in F.A.O. Schwartz and Big, what when Tom Hanks and Robert Loggia are doing like their little double um, thing on the piano, did you know that stunt doubles were hired to help them, but they didn't need the help? They did it all by themselves. That's amazing, right? And my second fun fact is, to help Hanks portray a 12-year-old boy um, in, trapped in an adult's body, Penny Marshall um, and actor David Moscow, who plays young Josh, um, tested scenes playing the parts of the older Josh so Tom Hanks could then imitate Moscow's um, like manners and in the real scene. So it still seemed like that he wasn't a full grown up and he still had his personality. And now I'd like to give a huge shout out to Gary Ross and Ann Spielberg, who are the writers of Big. Thank you guys for making such a funny, heartwarming and great fantasy movie. And ladies and gentlemen, before we end today's episode, I'd like to give a little recap on how we got to Big today. We started with Greenhouse Academy and Benjamin Papik is one of the stars in Greenhouse Academy. And Benjamin Papik was also in Goosebumps. And Jack Black is one of the stars in Goosebumps. And Jack Black was also one of the stars in Jumanji The Next Level. Dwayne Johnson also stars with Jack Black in Jumanji The Next Level. And Dwayne Johnson is also in Moana with Tamiora Morrison, who is also in Star Wars Revenge of the Sith with James Earl Jones. And James Earl Jones is in Field of Dreams with Amy Madigan and Gabby Hoffman, who are both in Uncle Buck. With Anna Klumski, who has a cameo appearance for a split second in Uncle Buck. And Macaulay Culkin is also one of the stars of Uncle Buck. And they're both in the movie My Girl. And Macaulay Culkin is also in My Girl and the star of Home Alone. And John Hurd um, is the dad in Home Alone and plays Paul in Big. Now, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to search it up. Let's see. Cast of Big Tom Hanks. All right. Tom Hanks plays Woody in all the Toy Story movies, but I'm going to pick Toy Story 4 because I love that movie. Well, see you next time to talk about the movie Toy Story 4. <laughs>